Did it start? Yep. Okay. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Azuka and I am doing this week's chapter, this Sunday, uh, February 4th, chapter on um, databases in R, in the R for Data Science book. Um, and I will be going off of the R4DS PowerPoint that is online. Um, before I start, I would like to say that I believe some of the, I believe the the functions, some of the functions used here are like depreciated, if that makes sense. Um. Yeah, so they may not work as presented in the R four DS book because I was trying to I was trying to install them like earlier and they weren't working. Um, and I will try to do I will try to show a demo as I go along, but if it doesn't work, that's kind of why. Okay. So for this chapter, we're gonna go over the basics of database interface. The database interface package, sorry, and how to use it to connect to a database and then retrieve the data with SQL, also known as structured query language. Um, yeah, okay. So prerequisites, you need the DBI library, the dplyr library, and the tidyverse library. And this is kind of how I've presented that so far for installing and loading the, the packages and the libraries. Um, so 21.2 database basics. Basically a database is like a collection of data frames called tables um, in database terminology and like a data dot frame, like the data dot frame function, a database table is a collection of named columns where every value in the column is the same type. Um, and there's three high level differences between data frames and database tables. Um, database tables are stored on disk and can be arbitrarily large. And there are data, data frames are stored in memory and so as a result, they're they're limited, so they can't be as big. Database tables also almost always have indices. And much like the index of a book, a database index makes it um, possible to quickly find rows of interests without having to look at every single row. Um, data frames and tables don't have indices, but data.table too. And I believe data.table is, is like a base R function. Um, whereas Tibble, I think, comes from Tidyverse, um, which is one of the reasons why they're so fast. Um, and most classical databases are optimized for rapidly collecting data, not analyzing existing data. Um, and these databases are also known as being row-oriented because the data is stored row by row rather than column by column like in R. And recently there's been a development of column oriented databases that make analyzing data much faster. Oops. Um, so to connect to the database from R, you'll use a pair of packages. The DBI package, um, because it allows you to run SQL queries um, and also you'll use a package tailored for data DBMS um, and that translate DBI commands into specifics for a given DBMS. And there's usually one package for each DBMS, for example, R Pro Postgres for Postgres and R MariaDB for MySQL. Um, Here, so if you can't find a package for your DB, I believe that's a um, database management system or software, um, you can usually use the ODBC pack package instead. 
And this uses ODBC protocol supported by many DBS. ODBC requires a little more setup because you also need to install an ODBC driver and tell the ODBC package where to find it. So this is how to install it. Um, so here you'll see like we're storing into the con variable a, a function from the DBI package. I believe that's what these two these two colons represent. So you're going into the DBI like package library and you're referencing this function. And within that function, you are going into another package or library and you're referencing another package. I mean, sorry, another function. Um, and the same thing here, except now you're specifying where I believe the directory is as indicated in this library. Okay, so to load some data, I believe the DB write table function is being used to load in the MPG data set um, from ggplot2 using like, I guess the database format being stored into con. Um, let's see, I wrote this down. Okay. Okay, so now we've written the table using for MPG from the ggplot2 um, package and diamonds from the ggplot2 package. So now this is how we're reading the table. Let's see. So this is how it appears in the PowerPoint. And it's consistent with how it appeared in our, in the demo shown here. So here you kind of have like this data set. The, um, I believe this is the diamonds data set. Okay. So next we're gonna kind of run some SQL syntax to look at aspects of the diamond data set. So here, for example, we say select, we're selecting carrot, the carrot variable, cut variable, clarity variable, color, and price from the diamond diamonds, which is the data set. And then we're saying we want these where the price is greater than 15,000. And this is shown in the results of this query right here. So we've taken a SQL query, a traditional SQL um, query, we've stored it in a variable, and then we've then using um, the DB get query function and the variable that we stored, I guess, like instructions to convert our data into a data table database, I believe, um, we're turning that into a tibble and we're presenting that here. Um, yeah. So next we're going to look at deep DB plier basics. So here we're storing, um, diamonds as a table. We're creating the diamonds table database. Okay. Ken was saying something. Oh, Getting sorry. the collection. I guess the what you had in the what you're shown before, you said it's getting the connection 
and running the SQL statement to get the resulting table, which makes which it makes into a table. Yes. Yeah, yeah I was but referring to the previous command. Oh, um, you're talking about this one? Oh, yeah. The the code chunk after this one. This, this oh. one, yeah. I, this I was one? just explaining that one. Okay, that makes that makes way more sense than I'll explain it. But yeah, basically that's what happened. Okay. So thank you, Ken, by the way. Okay. Um so here, so here we start by taking the connection with the diamonds data set and we're making it a table. And we're storing that into the diamonds db into diamonds db as a as a variable, and so here I put head diamonds db so like we're not endlessly printing out like data, just to see like a glimpse like the first like five, six rows of the data or the head of the data. Um, which is consistent to what they have here. Okay. So next, um, from the diamonds database, or the diamonds underscore DB that we just created, the table variable that we just created, we are gonna use dplyr, sorry, we're gonna use the pipe operator from Magritter from the dplyr package, I believe, and we're gonna filter by the price greater than 15,000, and then from, that from what we get there, we're gonna pipe again, and then we're gonna select carrot through um, clarity, um, comma price. So it seems like we might be doing the same thing again, except this time in dplyr. Um, yeah, so that would be this data table right here, which is consistent with what was outputted um let's see um so what's what's interesting to note here is that um in the output you'll see here it says source sql for, and it tells you the database that it comes from um, and I think usually when you output a tibble, like here where it says source, it will tell you that it's a tibble. But this time it's telling you it's the data set. It's like the data is in like from SQL. So I think that's one of the ways that we can check that the result of previous operations were successful. And also here it says source SQL. Um, so when we hit run show query, I believe it's taking what we did here and then converting it into what it would be in SQL if we were to write it in SQL, um, which is shown here also. And then to get the data back in R, um, you would just, so the result of this query, we stored it into big diamonds DB. So if we wanna go back, we pipe from big diamonds DB and use the collect function. And then we get, um, and we store that into big diamonds. And then from there, when you output that data, that data set or that table, you now see that here it says that it's a tibble instead of a SQL data form database form. I don't know. It's a table that involves that in order to manipulate it, you would use like SQL queries to one that's just a tibble from tidyverse, a tidyverse data frame. Okay. So now for SQL, the SQL aspect. Um, so from the D DB plier package, we're going to take the copy of NYC flights 13 data set. 
which consists of airlines, airports, flights, planes, and weather, which I've quoted here, but let's see if it's going to work. Wait, let me see the error message. It says there's no package called NYC Flights 13. I think you have to load the NYC library, Flight 13 library. Okay. Yeah. NYC. Oh, oops. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Oh, I think you have to install it. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, that's weird. Never mind. I was going to say you don't have to put it in the parentheses, but it worked. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So, thank you guys. Um, so I just installed the NYC Flights 13 package, and I also installed. Oh, sorry, that's the weird thing I did. So I installed the NYC Flights 13, and then I loaded it with the library function. Um, I will say for some reason, I think the DBI database is like butting heads with dplyr. Um, and I'm not sure why, but it hasn't really caused any major problems yet. But I was getting early, I was getting warning messages earlier about that. Like it didn't want to load, so I had to go into the packages tab right here and then manually enable it. Um, so I guess it's loading. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it's doing, but in the, it's done, or oh, is it creating it? Looks like it's you... done. Okay, cool. Okay, great. So, okay. So after we loaded all these data tables, um, we're going to store flights as a table with the connection flight, flight, the flight data table into flights and the planes data table into planes. Okay, so from here, the top level components of a, of a SQL query of SQL are called statements. Common statements include create for defining new variables insert for adding data and select for retrieving data. Uh, we will uh, focus on select statements, also called queries, because they're almost exclusively what you'll use as a data scientist. So here, for example, flights from the, from the variable we created before with the flights data table, we're gonna pipe into the show query function um, I guess it's telling us how we got this data table. So using SQL, it's like select star from flights. Um, I forgot what select star means, but I believe, I forgot what it means, but it means something. I think it selects all the columns. Yeah, it selects all of the columns. So you're not really specifying like which columns or variables that you want. You're like, okay just select everything from flights. And same thing for planes, when you pipe to show query, it says select star from planes. So you're selecting all the columns from planes. And also that shows here when you run, when you run um, these two statements, um, flights and planes. This is the output from those two um, statements. So next we have, where and order by control, which rows, we have where and order by, which both control, which rows are included and how they're ordered. So here, for example, you have the flights data table and you're piping that 
to using the filter function, you're setting your destination equals IAH. Um, and from there, you're going to pipe to arrange, using the arrange function, um, arranging it by D, um, DEP delay. And then from there, you're going to pipe to show query, which takes this, what you did in uh, tidyverse slash dplyr and converts it to SQL query. So I believe these are equivalent statements. And so when you hear in the code, this is what it looks like in R, and then this is the output in SQL. So it's consistent. Um, for the group by statement, um, this converts the query to a summary causing aggregation to happen. So here, when you take flights and then you pipe it to gr the group by function, and you're grouping it by destination and you pipe it again and you're summarizing the EB, DEP delay, DEP delay um, equals, so you're creating, I believe you're creating a new variable called DEP delay and it's gonna show the mean of the DEP delay um, without the any NAs that may appear in the data column. And then you're gonna pipe that to show query. So show query basically shows your SQL query. And so these are also equivalent statements. And this is what it looks like. This line of code, this group of code results in this output, this SQL output. <laughs> and so here when they indicate mean, you can just see that they indicated average, which is the same thing. So select destination, group by average DEP delay, which is this right here, this statement as DEP delay. And then from flights, which is the data table, and you're grouping by destination. Okay, next, the select statement. So the select clause is the workhorse of queries and performs the same job as select, the select function, mutate function, rename function, relocate function, and as you'll learn in the next section, the summarize function. So select, rename, and relocate have very different, have very direct translations to select as they just affect where a column appears if at all, along with its name. So here, for example, we're taking <clears throat> the planes data table from NYC flights 13, and we're gonna pipe it to select tail num type manufacturer model and year, which are variables or columns in the table. And then from there, we're gonna pipe to show query to show what the query would look like in SQL. And so here I have the code written down um, to show how it would appear in our markdown and it's consistent. So we're selecting tail num, variable, type variable, all these variables from planes, except notice how here there's a quotation around type and year. Okay, um, yeah, so these these um, these are equivalent. Now here, sorry, um, they, I didn't really read the chapter yet. Did they say why some of them were? Was it like something special about those variables that they put in the quote? Or did they say? Um. It doesn't really say why it's in quotations. Wait, let me see if the data set will say anything. Oops. 
year and type. Oh. Oh, let's see it in the chat. That's the book. Oh, like this. Jeremy, if you want to come off mute. I'm sorry? You're kind of muffled. No, Jeremy was saying something. And then he said the book did mention it. Oh. It might not be in the notes. But yeah, because yeah, usually it's like if it's character, but it didn't look like. Yeah, they both type in here. Huh. Uh, maybe I'll oh, share yeah. screen to see where the things are. Uh, hello. Yeah. Oh, Please sorry. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'll yeah. share screen to see where the quote thing is mentioning the actual book. Oh, you want to share screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can share screen. I just stopped sorry. sharing. Yeah. It's okay. Let's see. It's Yeah, I guess I was just going through the books as well, and they said that it was it was actually reserved in some database command, and so to make it safe, uh, they put the codes on them to differentiate like which one is the reserved words and which one is the actual column that has the same name as some reserved words. Oh, so mm -hmm. they're like, they're words that are used by SQL, is what you mean. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm not sure about Yeah, it, it probably means, I guess it means something in SQL when you're using those words. So that must be why, like, those could be command words, I guess. Like, I guess, for, for instance, if we were using um a database that had like or a database that had the word tibble in it for some reason or mutate but we wanted to do something with it in r it would be probably hard to mutate the word mutate if you know what i mean mm. yeah i'm guessing that's what it is i don't know but yeah you can feel free to keep going um azuka i was just curious <laughs> yeah um, yeah okay that makes sense yeah um uh, okay yeah, let me reshare my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, and then I forgot to. I didn't scroll on this one, but here, for example, they renamed year built to year. Yeah. And here they also renamed it. From year built. Okay. And um from the planes data set, when we pipe that to select these variables, and then here the relocate function, yeah. So here, the relocate function is taking manufacturer and model, and it put and it's putting it before type. So so how the select statement selects these columns is how it will appear, um, in the final I guess table or the tibble. So we're taking manufacturer and model and we're just putting it here after tail them. So that is that is how it will come out. Um I think here they just wrote this select in the order that they wanted it without having like a relocate, having to use the uh I guess a, I'm not even sure if there's a relocate clause in SQL. I I, I don't really know a lot about SQL. Okay. Same. We're, we're learning with you, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And so it's consistent with um the outputs that I ran in um R. Okay. So next we're looking at subqueries. 
So sometimes it is not possible to translate a dplyr pipeline into a single select statement. And you will need to use a subquery. A subquery is just a query used as a data source in the from clause instead of the usual table. So here, for example, we take the flights data set from NYC flights 13, and then we're piping it. We're going to use the um, mutate function, and we're creating two new variables, year one, which is the year plus one, and year two, which is year one, which takes this year one and adds one to it. And then we're going to pipe that to show the query. And the SQL version of this is a little bit. OK, so select q01.star. I'm not sure where q01.star comes from. Wait. Oh, I think um, I think for yeah, that I one, it, I think it's like a regex. That means like all columns that um, I think it's like all columns that start with this Q zero one. All columns that start with Q zero one. Yeah, it's a regex. Yeah, I think like the previous chapter, like fifteen or fourteen, like previously talked about regex. I think it's like a regex. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I don't see uh, Q0. Or or I think it could be um a, a table, I believe. That's called a Q0. Table? Possibly. Yeah, I'm not sure either. It's weird because it's from, it's from flights. That's the thing. It's from flights. But maybe is that the subquery? Yeah. Yeah, it could be a... Yeah, I'm not sure where the ta that table Q01 is. Maybe that, that might be the subquery. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe it came from the from function, like when you use the from at the bottom. Right, it right here. Q01. I think it's down here. Okay. I think that's the yeah. table that's pulling from. Yeah, it's a new table called Q01. And then when SQL creates a new table, everything starts with Q01 in their columns. Oh. Yeah, it's weird that it comes up first, but <laughs> yeah, huh? Okay, I think okay. yeah, I think the Q zero one is the name of this subquery. You, you see the from statement? Yeah, that's the query. I think that's the query that's generating the Q zero one, and then that top okay. select is just referencing that table you just made from this subquery. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it backwards like, kind. Of. Yeah, kind of, maybe it's yeah. like initializing it. Kind of yeah, thing. so like it's ever, as Q creates a new table, like the flights, right? Like the New York flights, uh, the other thing has four tables, right? So when you just choose the flights table, it starts with the flights, then dot star. So it's the same logic here where you create a new table called Q01, and then you, the first function, uh, the first select collects all the columns in the new Q01 table. Okay, I yeah. see, because here, like, it first made year one, and here the from statement, it's year as year one. So this is where you make the year one. Yes, you make the year one from the flights table, yeah. right? A flight dot yeah. star. Yeah, so it looks like it starts here, like you guys said, and then starts with year one from flights, and then it makes it as Q01, and then it comes back here and uses from the q01.star and year one, adds one to year one and makes year two, like here. Yeah, that is quite yeah. interesting. Okay, That's cool. <laughs> yeah, very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> way for R to like tell you how to write that. Otherwise, yeah, oh my God. I didn't realize SQL is like backwards. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
I see, I see. Okay, so next we're looking at joins. So if we're familiar with dplyr's joins, SQL joins are very similar. Here's an example. So here is an ordinary join using the flights table data table. We doing a, we're doing a left join to planes, and from so within the left join, we're taking the planes data table and we're piping it to rename the year built variable to year by the tail number variable, right? Think the mind a little backwards. I think it's creating your built. Oh, you might have said it. It's creating oh. your built. Yeah. Oh, it's creating your built. Yeah. And then yeah, it's joining it by tail num. Yeah. Wait, no. Wait. So you have the left join. So so rename. So planes pipe rename. Bloody who? This is within left join. So yeah. So we're piping planes, and we're gonna rename within the planes data table. So we're gonna make yeah. yeah we're renaming okay. year to year built, right? Yeah, because exactly. I think okay. flights is its own data table, and I think we're joining we're joining planes to flights, and then yes, within within planes we're renaming the year variable to year built because I think we want to overcome like why SQL was weird about the name in quotes, and then yeah. the flights uh, and the plane uh, data we're joining flights. by. It could be because hmm? flights also have the column year, so. They don't want to conflict when you do a left oh, join. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was a. It yeah, was flights a also year. have the column yeah. years. So if you if you didn't rename it, you have some. Uh, you have two columns of years in the end, which is not what they yeah. want. Okay. But it's joining flights and planes by tail number by tail num. Yeah. And it's renaming year to year build. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then they made a query out of that. So, okay. So let's see. So select flights dot star. Oh, so we're selecting flights, planes, planes dot year as year built. So this is where they rename that variable type. Manufacture model engine seat speed engine from the flights data table, and they're doing a left join to plane. So that's this function, or th that's this operation right here. And then they're joining it on tail num on flights dot tail num equals to planes dot tail num. So yeah. it's it, so it's like within the flights data set, there's a tail num column. And planes, there's also a tail num. So that's that's the key. I think the yeah yeah the key. So that's key. how it's matching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how it's matching. Okay. Yeah, it's you specified in the by argument by equals tail num in the the yeah. r. Yeah, that's why it's doing the the left joint. That's where it's doing left joint. Okay. This is like way longer than doing it in tidyverse. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I'm sometimes glad I'm not I have I'm not learning SQL. <laughs> I can just do it in R. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. And then like when you run the code, it's it's pretty it's consistent. So that works. Okay. Um other verbs. So there's like the um db plier also translates to other verbs like distinct, slice, underscore, star, and intersects, intersect, and a growing selection of tidy, tidy R functions like pivot longer and pivot wider. The easiest way to see the full set is to visit D plier, db plier. I guess I will I will not visit that. Or maybe I'll visit it at the end. Um function translations. So far, 
we focused on the big picture of how deep plier verbs are translated to the clauses of a query. Now we're going to zoom in a little and talk about the translation of the R functions that work with individual columns, like what happens when you use mean X in a summarize function. To help see what's going on, we'll use a couple of little helper functions that run a summarize or mutate and show the generated SQL. That will make it a little easier to explain, to, ex to explore a few variations and see how summaries and transformations can differ. So I guess the first function is, um, this first function takes a data frame and pipes it to the summarize function and then it pipes it to the show query to, to convert it into like a SQL query. And it stores that into the summarized query, into a summarized query variable. The next query, next function, mutate query, take is a function that takes a data frame and it pipes it to the mutate function. Um, not sure what this keep, this dot keep none is doing but at the end, it's also converting that to a SQL query. Um, let's see. Um, so this is what the first function looks like when it's outputted. Oh, sorry, and then let me say the last one. So for example, you take flights, pipe that to group by, and then you're grouping it by year, month, and day variables. And then from there, you're gonna pipe the result of that to the summarize query function, which we defined up here. And then you're creating a new variable called mean from the mean arrival delay, removing the NAs, and you're making a median. You're, yeah, you're making a medium variable or column using the median function of that same variable. And so the SQL equivalent of that operation is to do select year in quotations, month in quotations, and day in, in quotations, um, do average of the arrival de delay, and then you're saying, we want to represent that as the mean. What's interesting here, they have percentile cont 0.5 within group, order by arrival delay as median. Yeah, because it's a 50th percentile. Yeah. I guess instead of just saying median. Yeah. Very roundabout. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. SQL doesn't have a median function. Okay. And then from flights, we're gonna group by year, month, and day in quotations. And then same thing with flights, group by year, month, day, then we're gonna use the mutate query function this time, and then make a mean variable as the mean of the arrival delay. And the equivalent in SQL is selecting the same three um, variables again, um, this time we're going to average, do an average of the arrival delay over partition by year, month, day as mean from the flights data table, um, over partition by year. Yeah, so I guess it's just taking the mean of each of those. Yeah. Oh, so you think it's it's taking the mean of the year, month, and day of each? So I think because then arrival delay is one of the columns. Yeah. Let me see. So I guess within arrival delay, it's taking the average for each of the years, average for each of the months, and average for each of the days. I don't know. I have to. Yeah. It could be doing it arrival delay by year. Arrival delay by month and arrival delay by day, like an average. If that's what you were saying. Yeah, like an, I'm wondering if it takes an average for each of them. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly what you were saying. 
Yeah. Huh. People's weird. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Let's see. Let's see what it puts out. Well, I feel like if, if that feels correct. Um, yeah, because you're grouping by that. Okay, so I guess instead of, because here they do summarize query and here they do mutate query. I feel like this is probably a shorter way to do this. Um, actually, they don't have median in there. Never mind. So instead of having like the, at the end where they have show query, this show query here. I think they just use mutate query function to yeah. show like, okay, we're making this mean variable and this is what we'd want to take the average of. But I think it probably means the same thing. That is my guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's my educated guess. Um, here we have flights. Oh, sorry, let me see the chat. So, dot keep means none and only keeps new variables made with the mutate function. Okay, I see. Okay. Thank you, chat. So um, finally, flights. So we take the flights data table and then we pipe it to group by and we're grouping by destination. And then we're gonna pipe that into the arrange function and we're arranging by time underscore hour variable. And then we're gonna pipe that again into the mutate query. Excuse me. We're piping that again to mutate, mutate query function. Um, and we're saying we want to make a, a variable called lead and a variable called lag. And we're gonna sh sh do lead of arrival delay and the lag of arrival delay. And in SQL, the equivalent query in SQL would be so using the select um, statement. So we're selecting by destination um, or group by destination. Um, here we said lead arrival delay one null over partition by destination, order by time hour as lead. And then lag, arrival delay one null over partition by destination, order by time hour as lag from the flights data table and we're ordering by time hour. So, I guess it seems like this is also another way to make a variable in SQL, like creating a new variable in SQL. But one and then null, I am not sure what, what those mean. Not sure either. Um, You'd have to probably look in the sequel more. Yeah. Wait. How does it look? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. 
I'm not sure why. Maybe one is like the smallest that it could be without being negative. I don't know. It just seems like a quirk of SQL syntax. Yeah. That's weird. Oh, never mind. Zeros. We have zero in there. I'm not sure why why that is. But I do know arrival delay is a variable. Um, I know lead. Yeah, I guess lead is a, is a function in SQL as well. Yeah, I'm going to put something in the chat if you want to open it up. It's just a website talking about SQL. Okay. Uh, and potentially it might give us more input. Maybe scroll down a bit. A uh, little bit more. Yeah, it talks about the syntax of it. <laughs> but it's read expression, something offset, default value. Yeah. Over order by columns. But yeah, it's just the syntax of how they write it. I don't understand all of it, but yeah, Maybe it's just something just... related to. Oh, what happened? Let me scroll down a bit more. I'm gonna scroll up again. Scroll up. Let's scroll up again. And... Yeah, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's how the now comes up is when. Okay, we scroll up a bit more. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's how the noun comes out. Like, if we scroll down again, then I scroll down. There's a table of the noun part here. Yeah. yeah, I guess that if we didn't put the noun explicitly, uh, or we put a different value from now, that 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 highlighted value maybe. That something else that we put in, like. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I'm guessing maybe like how, like R will change things to NA. I guess then, like for SQL, maybe they use no. So like if they don't find something, they put no in it instead. That's my best guess. Yeah, and if you put something else like zero, and then the now will replace by zero instead. Yeah, yeah, because you don't like you don't want to put zeros and just randomly put zeros in like, um. I guess in something that you can average if it's a number, because then mm -hmm. that could end up meaning like it'll distort whatever average you take if you put a zero and it's not supposed to be a zero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because zero means something versus null. Yeah. Okay, I see. Oh, okay. So it makes it so that if like if you did a zero here, I think probably you would it would do an an erroneous operation versus no, I mean if you scroll down a bit more, they should show a zero example. I was looking down the slides a bit. Okay. Um A bit more. Okay. No, no, not this one. A, more, a bit more. Yeah, that 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 one. I, yeah, that's the one where they had the default as zero. If we go up, scroll up the command line. That's where the uh scroll down again. Mm -hmm. The query, yeah, this time the query wasn't a now anymore, it was a zero. Oh, Yeah, so I guess you can choose what to put there, whether you want to put a zero or a null, or whatever else you'd want to put there, seems like.
interesting. I guess I will have to read up more on this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I think otherwise though. Um yeah, that was the end of the chapter. Cause next is summary, which just kind of talks about what we talked about. And then oh, and then shows how to disconnect from DB. From the database. And then, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Cool. Yay.